Hello, I'm Rory McKiernan and welcome to the Love and Courage podcast. This episode is something a bit different. It's a short episode, not my usual interview with somebody. It's actually a short interview with myself recorded on Today FM radio station and the last word show with Matt Cooper. Uh, It's a short interview. It marks the launch of my new book, Hitching for Hope, A Journey into the Heart and Soul of Ireland. And it's also a little reflection on these times we're in around community resilience, holding tight together and maintaining hope in turbulent times. My book uh, was published straight into the thick of the COVID-19 crisis. It actually was released into bookshops in time for the bookshops to close. Uh, So I had to scramble and reconfigure what a launch might look like. And I ended up having a virtual launch. You may have seen or watched that online or you may not have. Um, Thankfully, hundreds and hundreds of people around the world tuned in and it ended up being a beautiful experience. Uh, Actually, a real community vibe to the whole thing. And you can still watch that on my Facebook page. It's Hitching for Hope on Facebook. You'll also find it at hitchingforhope.com. The link is there. It's on YouTube as well. Uh, It's actually two hours. Uh, I might podcast the audio of it, so that may end up being the next podcast. But I do have another great interview ready to go, and that will be with you very soon. And appreciate the patient, your patience, particularly all the patrons that are supporting the podcast. Um, The book has taken up a lot of energy recently, particularly making sure it gets a proper launch out into the world. I'm glad to say it is making its way around the world, despite bookshops being closed. Thankfully, people People are still ordering it online. It's available um, through amazon.co.uk, bookdepository.com, various other independent shops. Not all of them are shipping at the moment, but I know Amazon and Book Depository are, and I know different people have favourite shops that they prefer to use, as do I. I always try and champion the small ones where I can, uh, but we're in very unusual times. And I'd like to think that the book speaks to the times to some extent. Uh, It's the big Big themes are around um, community resilience, hope, standing firm in, in difficult times in our own lives and in our countries and in our world. So um, without further ado, I'm going to I'm going to allow the interview to commence and uh, I'd encourage you to check out the book if you can, hitchingforhope.com. You can order it online. All your support is really appreciated. Uh, so many people have already got behind me and I'm really feeling the love and a lot of gratitude for podcast listeners and I hope you enjoy this short interview. Now, I suppose if we crisis of a decade ago was that things do pass. They don't necessarily get better for everybody. But for the majority of people, that particular crisis, no matter how bad it seemed at the time, did pass. Unfortunately, now, of course, we're in a new one, but perhaps we can learn from what's happened before. And as it happens, we are joined by the author of a new book, Hitching for Hope, which is a story of how one man, a social activist, went around the country in the wake of the Celtic Tiger collapse and what he found and what gave him hope. Rudy McKiernan, thank you very much for joining us here on The Last Word. Thanks for having me, Matt. Appreciate it. Hitching. You know, there's a generation who probably don't even know what hitching is because it's gone out of popularity, I think, for two reasons. One, because of all the motorways bringing people around the country and you can't hitch on the motorways. And secondly, people think it just simply isn't safe to do. But when you took to it, why did you decide to start hitching and explain what you did? Yeah, it's a very good question. Um, I suppose at the time, it was several years ago now, I was I had built this uh, charity called SpunOut.ie. It's a national youth organization and website for young people. And I'd spent several years building that and leading it with some great people. And I was experiencing what many people might call burnout and just going through a period of my life where things weren't going well. I had no energy, I had no zest, uh, my mood was down and I just knew it was time for a change. So I decided to quit my job, but I walked straight headfirst into the into the recession, into austerity and there was a lot of gloom in the air and a lot of hopelessness, you might say. And I was feeling that myself. I was feeling a sense of frustration and a little bit of anger as well, if I'm to be honest, and a feeling that maybe I would emigrate. And it was around that time that... The McGill Summer School asked me, would I like to speak about citizens' views of Ireland? And I didn't want to speak because I felt there was too many people pontificating about what citizens should do and what was the way out. Um, 
But then this idea came to me that maybe we should go and listen to what people want. And I feel like maybe it was a personal thing as well, that it was a kind of a pilgrimage where I needed to shake out of my own rut, my own comfort zone and actually just drop everything. And at the time, I had no money, I had no plan. I didn't know what I'd do. And, and this idea of hitching came to me because it had this sensibility from growing up in rural County Cavan and Coot Hill that I grew up with it and I knew that it was a way of connecting with people in a very raw and real way and an organic and an unplanned way. And I felt like there was something in me that needed that. And I felt like there was a call to connect with the country and to see where hope might come from. So I called it Hitching for Hope as this project, if you like, and an experiment. I wasn't trying to prove anything. And then it just blossomed from there and it became this huge thing. And I didn't plan to write a book. Um, and you've written many books, I know, Matt, but I found it very, very difficult. Uh, but I persevered and I feel like I had to honor all the stories that I met. And in some ways, it's semi-memoir as well. It's, it's describing some of my own experiences in life and working in the charity sector and so on. So it's it's about hope. It's about healing. It's about community, about connection. And those topics feel very relevant right now in the world. So you started hitching and where did you go to and what sort of people did you meet? Yeah, well, I started off in, um, in my mother actually relocated a few years ago. We've all ended up in the West somehow. I don't know why or how, but um, my mother now lives in Spiddle. Um, and I started off there just, it's good to get the cup of tea with the mammy and get the blessing before heading off. And I, I started off then into my Cullen, Uchtarard, Inishbof and on up the West Coast to Sligo, Donegal. Ended up in Derry actually at um, the Orange on the 12th of July. I did a bit with the BBC up there an interview and they asked me to stay on. Ended up on an Orange March, uh, which was quite challenging for me having grown up close to the border and having particular feelings around um, separation, sectarianism and, and colonialization, if you like. And I suppose it was an opportunity to see into other tribes, into other uh, cultures. It's not very different than ours, really, you know. And um, But really, to, to not kind of take away from some of the very real separation issues that are there and prejudices, but to look at other people as people and to see beyond the separations and divisions that in many ways have been rising in recent years about whether it be about religion or race and to go beyond that and to challenge myself to go beyond that. And indeed, I met priests, I met nuns, I met monks, I met farmers, fishermen, business people, um, people also that were going through a lot of sadness, uh, people that have, I, I don't like the term necessarily lost, lost loved ones to emigration, but certainly missing their loved ones. And at the time as well, my own brother emigrated to, uh, he ended up in China actually, and our family have been, you know, very closely following the, the crisis recently because my brother's lived through a kind of a lockdown for the last three months with his child and wife. Um, so that, that experience of grandmothers missing their grandchildren and um, an experience of people losing their homes and their houses. So a lot of anger and despair, but then also meeting people that had been through separations, divorces, uh, people that had uh, lost their business but were rebuilding. And in some sense, you might say that there was a kind of a spiritual or an existential questioning going on about what matters in life. And I think crisis can do that. And we see that at the moment where when our world falls apart, it can bring us in a number of directions. But if we seize it consciously, it can allow us to really reevaluate where we're at in our own lives and Rory, what we want for the future. Were you getting these all of these insights from conversations from people who were picking you up in their cars or are you the type who's able to sort of go into a, a coffee shop or a pub and start striking up conversations and gleaning all of this material? Yeah, I, I kept it pretty loose, Matt. Um, like I, I didn't want to like force people into conversation or to turn them into kind of research, you know, to force them to kind of extract in a, you know, obviously like, we, we can you could take a journalistic view of it or approach to it, but I just kept it fairly loose and, and I wouldn't push people. I wasn't trying to extract anything. And so you'll see in the book or reading the book where it's just the chats, you know, and if you trust people and connect with people, it wasn't everybody that divulged everything. But there's something also very special about hitchhiking where you're sitting in a car with a stranger, essentially, and they're not, you're not looking eye to eye or face to face. And, and there's a trust in that, in a sense, and maybe a trust that you might not see that person again, maybe, 
but there's an openness to it. And I think a lot of people also have some nostalgia as well, particularly in rural Ireland for hitchhiking. And they tell you their own stories about their youth and their family. And that would open up a kind of a thread of a dialogue as to what might be going on in their lives at that particular moment. And did you get a sense that you were doing this in the aftermath of the fall of the Celtic Tiger? Were people angry or were people hopeful that they could rebuild their futures? What sort of mood did you discern? There was a very real anger, Matt. Um, the the Anglo tapes had just come out, the revelations, um, the kind of leaks around the tapes and so on. Um, there was definitely a raw anger and it was very hard to get away from that. And a sadness, definitely a sadness that wasn't always captured. And I know from my own work in particularly around youth mental health, but mental health in general, that a lot of that was undocumented um, depressions and even suicides. Now, some of it obviously was documented, but it, it, it knocked a lot of people and it hurt a lot of people what went on. As, as is happening now, there, there is a lot of upheaval in people's lives and a lot of fear and a lot of angst and anxiety. But I think two worlds can live side by side where hope and fear sometimes are in a dance with each other, you know. And I definitely got a sense of a strength within people as well, a strength in their spirit to survive. And I think we get that often from our parents and our grandparents and you might say our ancestors where I think this is the history of Ireland. We've been through so many tragedies, so much injustice, so much pain and we know that we can get through and I, I believe we'll get through this as well. Of course we will, um, but it's about how we get through it and I think we have to seize these moments and that's a decision that we each have to make on an individual basis. Rory McKernan, thank you very much for taking the time to join us here on The Last Word on Today FM. Rory's new book is Hitching for Hope. Hello, Rory here again. Thanks so much for listening. If you want to check out the book, Hitching for Hope, A Journey into the Heart and Soul of Ireland, you can find various links on where to buy it with free home delivery on different websites. You can go to hitchingforhope.com, hitchingforhope.com. And thanks so much for all your support. If you do buy it and read it, or you're already reading it, appreciate your reviews on Amazon, on Goodreads and on Google Reads. Any help spreading the word is hugely appreciated. Same with the podcast. It's a big community effort and I really do appreciate it if you're new to the podcast please consider checking out the archive lots of great stuff in there and I'll have another episode very soon thanks so much for your support until next time wishing you lots of love lots of courage